everyone and welcome to my channel. I have a very special video for you guys today, which is another Christian chat. Today's episode is going to be on seasons of isolation and being set apart. God has placed this message on my heart so heavily, so I don't know who needs to hear this, but I pray that this video gets to you. There is so much to discuss, so I'm just going to get right into it. I just want to put out a disclaimer and say that I am in no way, shape, or form like a preacher of any sort. I am just speaking off of the things that God has placed within my heart. So first, we're going to start off with what it means to be set apart by God. Being set apart means that you're not operating in the same way that the world is operating, but you're operating within God's will for your life. And because we live in a society that prioritizes worldly desires over God's desires, we are naturally going to be on a different path than everybody else. So being set apart is being in this world, but not of this world. You're operating within God's will for your life. And society has normalized fitting in so much, but fitting in is just conforming to the world's standards. But anything outside of operating within God's standards for your life is you not reaching your full potential. It's literally biblical that God says that we're here in this world, but we shouldn't be operating the same way as everyone else. I'm not saying this out of my own mind. This is literally biblical. So we're going to read Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. We were made to operate within his will. God is saying we do not conform to what the world is doing because he wants to take us to places that we can't even imagine he would bring us. And being set apart is not easy because you're always operating on the outside of what everyone else is doing. So sometimes it is very easy to just feel out of place. But here's what God has to say. We're going to read Galatians chapter 1 verse 10, which says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So we don't try to seek the approval of everyone else. Sometimes I know that it does get hard because at the end of the day, we're human and we're going to want to feel like a sense of normalcy. But when you start looking from a spiritual perspective, you realize that being set apart is truly a blessing. Now as Christians, we are called to want to be like Jesus. Of course, his standard is literally perfection, so we could never actually get to the point where we are like Jesus, but we're called to make that daily effort to try to live like he did. And if we want to be like Jesus, that also means that being set apart comes with the territory because Jesus was most definitely set apart. And this is seen in like the New Testament where Jesus would literally be at dinners and, and stuff with these sinners surrounded by them, but he never let what they were doing influence him. Like that's a very clear example of what it means to be in this world, but not of it. You could be surrounded by people that are not operating in the will of God, but still stay true to who you are and true to your values. So if we want to be like Jesus, that also means that we need to be set apart. Now, being set apart also comes with seasons of isolation because God needs our attention. He needs us to focus. He needs to bring us from where we are to the season of blessings. And sometimes that brings seasons of isolation because you are so different from everyone else. Sometimes it could be a very lonely path, but I promise you it does not stay that way. And I'm speaking from personal experience here because I have gone through seasons of isolation, but God has also blessed me with so many amazing Christian friends that hold similar values as me. So this season does not last forever. I know when you're in it, it feels like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I promise you it's there. But sometimes we're so consumed in other things that God needs our attention and he needs it right away. So he'll place us in seasons of isolation where we need to just focus on him. Now, because you are so vulnerable in these seasons of isolation, this is where the enemy tries to come and attack you the most because he sees that you are feeling discouraged. He tries to place these ideas in your head that God doesn't love you anymore or that God has abandoned you. But the truth is, God has is drawing you even closer than you've ever been with him before. These are just lies that the enemy is placing in your head because he knows that you're in a place where you're vulnerable, where you don't want to be in this season of isolation, but God needs you there to focus. So he's trying to do anything to take your focus away from the Lord. 
and Jesus is a clear example of this before Jesus's crucifixion he went into the wilderness to pray and fast God needed his attention he went and he gave him his attention but while he was there the enemy came and kept continuously trying to tempt him but he stayed true to his core stayed true to his value and true to what God wanted for his life and did not let Satan tempt him so because he knew that Jesus was probably tired and was weak and was hungry because he literally fasted for 40 days he tried to take advantage of that but as Christians we have to stay strong in resisting the lies and the and the temptations of the devil and if you're interested in reading the story of Jesus in the wilderness you could find it in Luke chapter 4 so the whole point of this story is that he didn't want Jesus in that season of isolation because he knew that Jesus was about to die on the cross for us and that he was one step closer to being defeated so he was trying to do everything in his power to stop Jesus from getting to that point the point I'm trying to make here is that through the season of isolation there are greater blessings on the other side Jesus just needs your attention he needs your focus he needs your devotion so that he can bring you to that place because where you are now he can't give you these blessings but through this season he's preparing you for the greater blessings that he needs you to reach so I know that seasons of isolation can be very discouraging and especially if you're going through it right now I pray that God blesses you with the strength that you need to get through it and that your blessings are so much more fulfilling than whatever emotions that you're feeling right now so I'm going to read two verses of encouragement I'm going to read Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 which says for his anger lasts but for a moment his favor lasts a lifetime Weeping may endure for a night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night. A tough season may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And if you know anything about God, you know that his promises are set in stone. When he says it, he means it. He does not lie. And lastly, I'm going to read Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God will give you the strength that you need to get through this season because he will never allow you to go through something that you cannot handle. He is there with you and trust me, he is moving in your life. So right now it may seem hard, but that season of blessings is so much greater. And I pray that if you're going through a season of isolation right now, that God gives you strength, that he gives you focus, and that he blesses you so abundantly. I hope that you liked this video, that it was encouraging and that it was helpful. Do not forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys!